Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now, um, my plan is to go ahead and polish off the fourth line. Yeah, the fourth line of the skill tree to uh, finish collecting uh, all that small stuff down there and get the solar panels. I desperately need those. Um, so last episode we got the asparagus staging, or we got the fuel, fuel lines so we can do the asparagus staging because I'm terrible at getting into space, despite what the last video might suggest. Uh, that rocket was a fluke. Uh, it was not meant to get into space, it should not have gotten into orbit, I don't know how it did it, but it did it, so you know what, whatever. Also, I had a good idea about the battery packs, as you guys are going to see here in a second. If you just cram a whole bunch of them inside one of those little storage ponds, it's all nice and sealed away and, you know, party looking. Uh, also, for what I was, what I have planned for this rocket, uh, I actually added way too much fuel. Um, but it's okay because I am in um, the scientific mode, not the uh, career mode, so it sort of balances itself out. Uh, also, as you saw there, that I had to disconnect and reconnect the outer tanks because, like an idiot, I put all four of them on at the same time instead of doing two and two. So, you know, there's that. Uh, now, I did put the nose cones on this one because I think on this one it will make a difference. And I also switched out Jeb for Valentino, which was possibly the greatest idea I had because I cannot tell you how well this mission went. Valentina is basically Jebediah, only with 50% less explosions. Oh, man. Yeah. And, uh, I forgot the fins. <sighs> Stability, people. Stability is everything. I was wondering, when it was flying up, I'm like, man, this thing is next to impossible to control. And, yeah. Twice, because I didn't have any fins on it. Um, RCS is definitely going to be on my list of things to get next time around, but fortunately this, these rockets aren't heavy enough to really require RCS, so, eh, you know, it's, it's not too, too bad. So, as you can see, this thing easily gets into orbit. I mean, look at that. I've only used, like, part of my two tank, part of my, um, the first half of my, uh, uh outer tanks. I still have two outer tanks left. You know, and then when they go empty, my center rocket is still completely full. So, yeah, easily, easily gets into orbit. Um, I think my next goal is going to be uh, traveling to uh, Minmus. I had to think of the name there for a second. Uh, but for right now, we are going to go to the moon. This is just a flyby. It's not an actual moon landing um, because I want to collect the moon orbit science, which nets me like 100, 100 and something science. I don't remember how much it was. Uh, also, sorry about the pause. Um, like I said, I get distractions a lot. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I just... Uh, I needed to collect like loads of science really quickly and to do that the best way to do that was to just go to the moon get into an orbit and then collect some science from around the moon so like I said next time we're probably gonna try and hit up men mess but as you see I have all those stages left full of delicious eco-friendly all natural rocket fuel. Um, and that is going to get me out to the moon and back, actually. Uh, I was expecting it to run out of fuel either on the way to the moon or just as we got into the lunar orbit. Um, it didn't. So that's why that top section was there, was because I had planned on using that top section to get back from the moon. And it turns out I didn't need it. So, yay. Uh, unfortunately, however, um, 
like I said, it is a huge waste of fuel. So I think next time around we're going to use the same design and this time we're going to go to Minmus because they should have enough fuel to get out there, do a quick turnaround and then come back. And that should be enough to, uh, should be more than enough fuel for all of that. Because I mean, once you're in space, you know, you don't really need a lot. You don't really need a lot of power to go anywhere. Because <clears throat> you're already in space. So... Um, trying to think, trying to think, trying to think. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, the next video I have is going to include another plane. Uh, I've been playing around with some designs, and I will discuss more about that in the next video. But I need to do some testing. And I need to collect more science so I can get the landing gears that I want. Which, fortunately for me, yay, they're in the 90 um, science area. So the area where, you know, everything costs 90 science. They're in that range. So, yes. Uh, so here, as you guys can clearly see, I am getting everything sort of set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jettison the bottom section in a spot where it's going to collide with the planet. Unfortunately, because of the rail system in this game, if you don't have the object selected um, as it's coming back from orbit, there's a very good chance that it's going to get stuck onto a rail and end up in an orbit, which is fine except that the rail system doesn't acknowledge the atmosphere of Kerbin. Bit... 50-50-ish. Mm, so, as you guys are going to see, I, uh, I have no idea what was going on with the graphics there either. Right? But as you guys can see, it that little bottom section has an orbit. I don't know why it has an orbit, but uh, I am going to have to switch to it and make sure it comes down because otherwise it actually will continue on that orbit so you guys get a lovely explosion not just one but four or five. Oh wait yeah sorry I think I skipped through that those the fins exploding off they exploded off by the way they overheated um not really the happiest person with the new overheating but you know wasn't on the development team so can't really complain uh, not to mention there's tons of easy ways around it, so, you know, just slow down, basically, which this thing can easily do. So, I'm actually going for another targeted landing in a specific area, because when you're in space, you can easily get to another biome in a few minutes, rather than, you know, having to try and fly a plane to a new biome. So, ooh, ooh, excuse me. So this is another targeted landing. Uh, I believe I was, I was trying to get to the mountains. Is I think what I was trying to get to. I uh, don't remember. I know I was trying to get to the mountains, but I didn't think I'd actually be able to get to the mountains with the um, with this particular vessel. Because I mean, trying to do a precision landing on a hillside is hard. Trying to do a precision landing on a mountainside. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You guys can already see where that's going. So, uh, I think I just wound up in the grasslands again and all that. But, yeah, I mean, now, there is one mistake that I will point out really quickly here towards the end. And that is, you'll notice I still have the rocket attached. I had planned on deploying the parachutes and using the rocket engine to help me slow down. Yeah, you guys noticed that didn't happen. Now why? Because I forgot about the uh, Separatron, and when I hit the space bar, it didn't deploy the parachute, it separated the fuel tank. Uh, also, apparently I burned out one of my rocket, uh, one of my parachutes. Don't know when that happened, don't know how that happened, but apparently it happened. So, and she takes a nice little tumble because, well, oops, she survives, though.
fortunately, collects the surface sample. Always the trooper. And yeah, bingo, we are complete. Um, collect the herd, collect the ship, go back and start spinning up this science, science points. Um, so I said I cleared out the rest of the tree and the next thing I'm gonna get is the uh, solar panels. So that's that guys, I'm done for the day and see you next time. So to that, I'm gonna say sayonara.